Uh, there is an incredibly high mortality rate uh, in the startup ecosystem, and uh, it's interesting you use the words perseverance and grit because um, usually, you know, when you have founders on the cover of Forbes or the Economic Times, etc., it's all about some some grand strategy that played out well. Um, you know, what what percentage of your success would be just perseverance, grit versus uh, and sheer luck versus uh, grand strategy and some you know, genius thinking. Uh. You know, the way I kind of try to define this is the following. Um, success uh, is a function of uh, a lot of hard work uh, with a lot of failures involved there. But you still continue to work, which is where grit and perseverance comes in for you to meet luck at some point of time so that you see success. You're not going to, like, not, look, all of us can build great strategies, frankly speaking, and, you know, some of us can also build wrong strategies. Wrong strategy, if you execute towards it, obviously it'll go down. And you can have great strategies and you can still go down. So none of those things really matter. I think what really matters is, uh, you know, how, uh, you know, how do you go about your day every day? And how do you look at that day every day, thereby uh, waiting for those things to happen that can then change, take the company to the next trajectory? And, and the way I look at some of these things is, uh, internally, people understand this. Uh, so for example, my leadership team, average age of my lead, no, not the age of the individual, but age within the company, of my leadership team is six and a half years now. So we've not churned any leader or hardly any leader. Uh, and the reason for that is because they all believe that look, we understand the vision of where we want to get to. And by the way, every, every year or two years, we change that vision and make it bolder. But I think everyone understands that our tenacity to get to it hopefully is there. And we won't give up. You know, you, you have this saying, right, in a lot of places where um, we will die trying, but we will not give up. And we hold ourselves to that. That is definitely inspirational. Um, but let's just uh, change focus a little bit. So I've, you know, in preparing for this, I, I read through a lot of your interviews elsewhere, and then a couple of aspects of your life haven't come out yet, and I wanted to touch on that, which is going back about 20, 25 years, uh, to tell us um, a little bit about you. Uh, you know, how are you as, as a kid? Were you, were you a, a nerdy kid? You know, were you, did you spend time with books? Did you spend time with girls? What, what, was, what, was, what was school like for you? And you're gonna tape this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the ways to, not appear elsewhere is not to say these things on a camera. <laughs> uh, no, no, I clearly wasn't a nerd. Uh, Sports? <laughs> yeah, yeah. School football team? Oh, well, no, no, I was very much into sports. So that was clearly the big, big high for me. Now, let me give you my story a little bit. Uh, you know, my, I met uh, my now wife in, when we were in grade five. Uh, so, so that answers a lot of your questions. <laughs> but I was very much into sports. Um, I played basketball and cricket, and I still do. Um, can't play that much anymore, you know. But still, uh, try. So I was a lot, a lot into that. Uh, tried. I was okay in studies, probably. Um, I think I was confused about what I wanted to be, frankly. Then, um, you know, there, there was these people who. My parents would always point out to me their Costco. <laughs> and I wouldn't get those. So you wanted to be them, but you knew you couldn't get there. Because for that, you had to do something which, which I could never do, which was study a lot. Um, and then there were things that attracted me uh, that had no future, frankly speaking. Uh, at least my parents said so. So I was a very confused child, I think. A lot of us have been. Uh, because we. We have not been uh, we have not been fortunate enough uh, to live in a world or to grow in a world. Maybe some of you have, 
you know, I should not, I should be careful because I am old now. Um, but most of us have not been fortunate enough to grow in a country where we have had our, the independence of making decisions about our life, about our life, and then we, we've been told what to do, right? So when you write this essay for when you go to the U.S. for studies, you say, "Why did I do why, what I did?" Like you have no reason for it. <laughs> like you just had to do it because that was the only thing told to you. So somebody asked me, "So why did you do engineering?" So he should do it. So you know, so some of those decisions. So I was, I felt that, you know, uh, I was somewhat confused. I was very, uh, I loved sports. I think, wish IPL was on then. I swear to God, I would have tried for it. Uh, so I sent my five-year-old son right now to sports. He said, okay, uh, I'm the cool dad. Uh, and stuff, but you know, uh, but I loved my childhood because I, I grew up on a campus. I, I also grew up on IIT campus, so my father and my grandmother were professors. The uh, pressure thoda jada tha. Must do engineering. Must do it from here. Both this are professors. Is this is Kanpur. This is Kanpur. Both are professors. Uh, every uncle of mine was a professor. 